Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The weigh-in for the undefeated American heavyweight Jarrell Big Baby Miller and his French opponent Johan Duper, it's been held. And well, Miller, he tipped the scales at a whopping 304 pounds. 304 pounds, career heaviest. That's 21 more pounds than his last fight against Marius Wok and about 60 pounds heavier than Duopa's 244 pounds. So I'll get to the weigh-in footage first, touch on some of the open workout this week, a comment from Miller himself, and then some thoughts. Because Miller, in my view, he needs a big performance, perhaps even bigger than big, if he is to advance his title aspirations and win over some fans. And also finish with something I'm sure you'll want to see. Stay tuned. Buckle in. Let's go to the clips first. At this time, let's have the weigh-in for our co-feature, a special heavyweight attraction scheduled for 12 rounds. Please welcome to the stage and to the scales the two heavyweight fighters that will be taking on each other for 12 rounds. First up, 37 victories, 24 big wins by knockout, only four defeats from Abbeville, saint France. He is the former WBC silver heavyweight champion, and he is Jean Reptile du Apas. And next up onto the stage, then to the scales, please welcome his opponent. 20 victories, 18 wins by knockout, only one draw from Brooklyn, New York. The NABO heavyweight champion title not on the line, the undefeated, Jarrell Big Baby Miller. <laughs> Stepping onto the scales at this time, he comes to us from France, 37 victories, 24 wins by knockout. Joan Reptile du Apas. 244.2, 244.2 pounds. Next up onto the scales, he holds the NABO title, not on the line. Undefeated, 20 victories, 18 wins by knockout from Brooklyn, New York. Gerald Big Baby Miller. It's gonna be a good one. That's our special heavyweight attraction leading up to the main event tomorrow night here at Barclays Center, Brooklyn, New York. Here they are, the big boys of boxing. It all goes down tomorrow night here at Barclays Center. Joan Reptile, Duapa, and Big Baby Miller. I'll get Dulpa out of the way first. So he's weighed in at a decent weight for him, 244 pounds. And that is between the 240 and 250 pound range that he has been coming in at for the past couple of years. And he looked in decent shape. But the really interesting story about this weigh-in, Jarrell Miller, 304 pounds. 304 pounds. So according to BoxRec, that is the highest weight of Jarrell Miller's career, with the previous highest being 298 against Gerald Washington in mid-2017. And that was actually a fight in which Miller looked pretty decent in. For the Marius Wok fight, and that was later in 2017, he weighed 283 pounds. And in those early rounds of that fight, he did actually look the better for the lighter weight. He had improved movement, more speed, but curiously, after the fight, Miller spoke of feeling weak at the lower weight. And when I say lower weight, it's all relative. But he spoke of wanting to actually increase his weight again because he felt more comfortable and powerful at a heavier weight. And that was a surprising statement at the time, and he's indeed delivered on it. So now we've got a guy who's about to jump into the ring at the heaviest weight of his career. And it's got me wondering, well, at what cost? What is the cost of carrying this extra beef? Six pounds heavier than his previous heaviest. Will he be slower? Will he be less mobile, less agile? Is something going to give? I mean, and given he's a high volume puncher and pressure fighter, you have to ask the question, will it impact Miller in the later rounds if it goes that far? 
all open questions and obviously we're going to see on the night but 304 pounds that is a lot so an open workout it was held earlier this week so i'll leave it to you to take what you want from these brief clips and how miller is looking also Dorper is thrown in too Back when this fight was announced in February, I said I didn't believe that this was a competitive fight, well, as competitive as it was being made out to be by promoter Eddie Hearn, who Miller is working with, and Hearn was adamant it's a 50-50 fight. And for me, that's patently not true. It's not a 50-50 fight. It's 80-20 at best. And if Miller is worth his salt, worth his high rankings in three different divisions, he'll win and he should win well. And this is not meant to be disrespectful to Johan Dorpe, but the reality is, he's 37, he's got a lot of miles on the clock, and the prime reason I believe that they targeted Dorpe was he was still a credible name, but more importantly, he was well ranked across three sanctioning bodies. And that's why I did peg in January that this fight was a possibility in part two of my heavyweight contenders for 2018. And my general thoughts, they haven't changed. Miller should win. He'll probably do his usual high volume, heavy pressure thing, grind Dorper into the dust, getting a stoppage probably, or even a retirement, somewhere between round 7 and 11. But here's the thing. Miller, he's been doing his level best outside of the ring to try convince us, the fans, that he's the real deal, that he's a threat to the heavyweight division, to the champions. And specifically, he's been calling out Anthony Joshua, saying Joshua's ducking him. And no one really believes it. And the thing is, Miller has been getting limited traction. And part of that, I believe, is because he wins ugly. His style doesn't exactly excite fans. And then you throw in, he's fighting fading title contenders like Marius Wok and Johan Dorp and trying to represent them as the best thing since sliced bread. It's not exactly the opponents even hardcore fans get excited about. Eddie Hearn can tell us all he likes that it's a 50-50 fight. But it's not. It's almost like high-level, stay-busy fights. It's designed to keep Miller in the public domain, get him up against relatively credible opponents, but beatable opponents. And there's other fighters who do exactly the same thing. But where I do agree with Hearn is the broad comments that he's made multiple times that Jarrell Miller, he needs to have a spectacular performance against Duopa to really get fans demanding that he be in a title shot against someone like an Anthony Joshua. Because right now, we're not. Fans are not demanding that fight. Miller is just another guy on the way up on the same level as a number of other guys. And a reasonably decent performance, in my view, is just not going to cut it with fans. Especially because it's the, the caliber of opponent. If he really wants to get cut through, he needs an emphatic performance. And just look at Dillian White, his recent performance against uh, Lucas Brown. And White and Miller, they're at about the same level. And White stock had instantly went up after his emphatic KO of Lucas Brown. And sure, you can say Lucas Brown, he was terrible and whatnot. But White did as much as he possibly could have. He looked really good in there. And his stock did go up. So that begs the question. Can Jarrell Miller do something similar to Johan Dorpa, who's actually a reasonably durable guy? I mean, will we see something different from Miller to the normal grind him into the dust type performances that we're used to? I'm not so sure, but I do expect him to win regardless. I'm not going to labour the point too much more, but essentially if Miller wants fans to jump onto his bandwagon, he has to have his performances match the trash that he talks outside of the ring. Because right now there is a bit of a disconnect from the way that Miller talks to his style of fighting. So let me know what you make of it all.
What does Miller need to do against Dilpa? Can he win fans over? Or is he destined to be a guy that some fans will never warm to because of his style? Drop a comment, loud and often. Follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. And now, roll tape.